In any sport or eSport, every dominant competitor gets a special kind of buff. By winning over and over, they build a mythos around themselves, and that mythos intimidates every opponent they face. It's hard to win against that style. Unless you're Nairo. Nairobi Nairo Quezada built his legacy off the stocks he's taken from the very best players in three different Smash games. In Brawl, he came into the scene as an unknown talent and left as the player that beat Mewtwo King and Zero to become the best. If you need to knock the crown off a king's head, look no further than Nairo, smash his own king slayer. Before we get started, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for all your competitive resources. You can get access to experienced coaches via our Play With Pros platform and learn from top players like MKLeo and our various pro courses. So what makes Nairo so good at taking down the best players? The same thing that makes him good at streaming, building a fan base, and making highlight reels. His style. His play is aggressive confident, and above all, creative. He's a high-risk, high-reward player who's willing to stake the game on a read and the set on a low-tier counter pick. He'll take a character that everyone knows and he'll play them in a way that no one has ever seen before. Oh, what? 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 Oh, my oh my god! god. No way! No Kamehameha! Way. Ah! He got the deck! Oh, he's still he's dead! He's still dead! Reverse 3-0 no His success didn't become national until he got third at Apex 2012 and first at Skatar. From that point on, Nairo would be one of the powerhouses in Brawl. He'd routinely play the very best in the game and he'd create rivalries along the way. However, there were two rivalries that eclipsed the rest. Nairo vs Mewtwo King and Nairo vs Zero. The reason for the rivalry came down to Meta Knight. The character Nairo, Zero, and Mewtwo King all played. Meta Knight had so many tools, so many movement options, so many different ways to play that he allowed pros to express their skill more than almost any other character in the cast. Meta Knight wasn't the only character that could compete, but Meta Knight was uniquely good, and that meant Meta Knight dittos were like nothing else in the game. Nairo represented a different kind of Meta Knight. Meta Knight had the tools to respond to anything the opponent did, but Nairo preferred to set the pace, not respond to it. to kill each other off a single touch. Basically, if, uh, if Meta Knight oh! separates them, he can kill Nano. Nairo liked to take the fight to the opponent, even if it wasn't optimal. Watch. Oh, good flip. Oh, and that ends it. Great read by yeah. Nairo. What a, what a way to close out the set. And it'll knock Salem into losers finals, advancing. The grand finals himself, Cole. If there was a foil to this style, it had to be Mewtwo King. Even in his melee days, Mewtwo King played a flowchart style. If my opponent does this, then I do that. Oh, I love Mewtwo King! Mewtwo King had built a career off of reading his opponent's aggression and putting a stop to it. In Brawl, Mewtwo King had a character that could do that better than ever. Nairo would need to beat Mewtwo King to prove himself. At the end of 2013, Nairo would get his best shot yet. He'd fight Mewtwo King at the Northeast Championship 2013 in a nail-biting five-game set. In game one, Nairo immediately surprised everyone by picking Falco. It was a character he had barely touched in bracket and was playing purely because he heard Mewtwo King struggled in the matchup. And he put on a show. I just realized, hey, if they're going again, again, stop doing it, A2K. He did it again. I don't know about that. Oh gosh. Oh my god. Yes. Oh! oh my god! Nairo tends to get the script. This is it! Oh! Even though he stole game one with the surprise spacey pick, Nairo went back to the Meta Knight ditto. If he was going to beat Mewtwo King, he was going to do it with Meta Knight. He wanted to prove he was the best player and the best Meta Knight. But he wasn't going to do it at the Northeast Championship. Mewtwo King ultimately stifled Nairo's aggression and won with percent to spare. At Apex 2014, Nairo would make his mark when it mattered most, against the king himself. It was a three game set where every match went to the last hit, and it summed up Nairo's playstyle. Gamble everything off stage, win, and Nairo with a nice sigh of relief, or lose. Now that puts Nairo back in the lead. Outstanding spacing, no but tech. no tech, and there it is, it. wow. In game three, it looked like another loss. Nairo was down nearly 100%. Then, in one dynamic opening, he brought it back. In one edge guard, he closed it. Nairo, Nairo knocks him out! And Mewtwo there it King is. is knocked into the loser's bracket, and Nairo takes it over him with a. Just like that, Nairo had settled the score and taken down the king. But the story doesn't actually end there. 
Though Brawl gets a bad rep, it had a strong international scene all the way to its end, and an international Brawl legend awaited Nairo in Grand Finals. After dominating the Brawl scene in Chile, Gonzalez Zero Barrios came to the US. After learning from Mewtwo King, Zero had taken his mentor style and refined it into something even stronger. In a few years, Zero established himself as one of the best to ever play the game and created a rivalry with Nairo. At Apex 2014, Nairo would have his chance to finally beat the king and the heir to the throne. When Zero and Nairo met in Grand Finals, they were fighting to see who was the best at the end of an era of Smash. Four games, three wins, and one legendary emote later, Nairo held the title. What an unbelievable way they bum rushed the stage. You know anything about Smash 4? You know this isn't the end. Not for Nairo, not for Zero, and not for their rivalry. Zero was not one to rest on his laurels, and when Smash 4 came out, he wanted to go even further than he did in Brawl. Zero would create a reign of dominance that would go far beyond what any Smash game had ever seen. A reign that began literally as soon as possible. Zero won the Smash Bros Invitational, then, after getting one third placing, went on a record breaking 56 tournament long winning streak. Is that like a Guinness World Record or what? As unstoppable as Zero looked, if there was anyone who could beat him, it was Nairo. After all, Nairo had done this before. In Brawl, he had taken a character to new heights using an aggressive touch of death style and used that style to take down the kings of the game. This time, Nairo had a truly unenviable task ahead of him. Win against Zero from the loser's bracket. Take two sets in a row off Smash 4's most indomitable force. He closed out Zero's first two stocks by reading a roll and a normal getup. Both times, he used aggressive, punishable options. This was the aggressive, confident, dialed in Nairo that could beat anybody, even the most dominant competitor Smash had ever seen. And over two sets and nine games, Nairo had finally done what no other Smash 4 competitor could do. He'd ended Zero's record-breaking win streak. Oh my god! It's over! It's over! He did it! Nairo! Not only that, but he did it playing his style and his character, adapting to and beating both of Zero's best characters, Sheik and Diddy Kong. As time passed, so did Smash 4's Time in the Sun. As happened with Brawl, another new game would come and eclipse the old one. And with that comes a new king. This time, MK Leo. Like Zero, MK Leo started his rise to dominance in one Smash game, then carried it onward and upward into the next one. Bizarrely, the deja vu doesn't just apply to Ultimate's top competitor. It also applies to Nairo, who started off Ultimate with another character crisis. Nairo needed to find another character that would complement his creativity. A lot of fans and even some pros questioned the pick. Politana got an early reputation for being a boring character that specialized at walling opponents out. Not how Nairo plays. However, even the skepticism wasn't new. Much like he had done with Meta Knight, Nairo would take a polarizing, defensive character and unleash a wildly new, very exciting side to them. In the grand finals of main stage, Nairo would finally get his big win by doing what he does best, bringing down the current king of Smash. Nairo came into the set from winner's side and with a lot of momentum. At first, the momentum didn't mean much. MK Leo took four straight games off Nairo, resetting the bracket and bringing it to 1-0. This is the point where a lot of competitors lose their nerve and their play style. MK Leo almost seems to thrive in the bracket reset situation and has earned some of his biggest wins from the loser's side. But unlike a lot of competitors, Nairo has been here before. Down 1-0, Nairo will not change his style. Nairo won't relent won't play passive, and won't just hope MK Leo makes a mistake. Instead, he will get more aggressive and chase Leo off stage over and over again until he forces him to SD. Super low oh, again. Okay, Ooh. forced him super low yeah. though. Okay, Nairo on the board. And that's all it takes sometimes, man. That's all it takes. So we'll see how this next game pans out. Now, Nairo is in the zone. He begins to chase Leo with aggressive options the champ cannot predict. Couldn't get the back here. Oh, okay. He's set up for the back throw. Yeah. Wow, that'll get it. He presses every opportunity to the fullest. Back throw yet again. Arson gone one more time in the oh, the air dive. Okay. And Nairo actually gonna make it back. Okay. He turns every hit into a combo. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh. 
and two stocks, the best player in ultimate. Oh, yeah. you're not coming back. Yeah, now, you, you know he was going to catch that. He, he already forced the air dodge out. What once was a classic MK Leo loser's run has now turned into a classic Nairo Regicide. And Nairo reminds everyone of who oh, he is. Right. Oh, my Ooh. God. First option. If you blink, you missed it. But Nairo re cementing himself on the top of the mountain with that 3-1 victory in set number two. He's the King Slayer of Smash. He's the opponent that no one is ever safe against. He's the player who can make any character look cool. He's one of the most dynamic, aggressive, and exciting players to ever pick up the controller. And because of all that, he's not only one of the best Smash players ever, but one of the most beloved players in the scene. Nairo can play and win like no one else. That makes him not just one of Smash's perennial top players, but one of its top personalities too.